I used to be a bit of a gamer. I started on the N64 and even had an original Game Boy. And over the years, I played pretty well all the consoles up to the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. But then I stopped. And not because I didn't like gaming either, but because I was sick of what mainstream gaming had become. Today, I'm talking about what I found to be an antidote to that. Building my own retro emulation console using a Raspberry Pi. This has been an excellent and intentional way for me to reconnect with my love of gaming, and I did it for less than 50 bucks. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer, and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and digital minimalism. Let's get into it. So starting off, I want to give a little preamble about emulation and legality. Because as soon as you say emulation, a lot of people's heads go to piracy. Jail. But folks, that's never something I'm going to advocate for here on the channel. But what I am going to advocate for is emulation itself, because emulation is legal and it's totally normal. Boiling it down simply, it is software that mimics older hardware and companies use it all the time. Nintendo uses emulation for the classic games on their newer systems. Xbox and PlayStation do the same thing. And indie developers too, they rely on emulators to share their retro style or homebrew games. New games made for old systems. And that is the focus of my video today, folks, the legal, open source, and creative side of emulation. Because there's a rich world of indie developers out there making new NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy style games, all totally legal and legit, and they capture the same nostalgic magic that we all grew up with. Basically the same fun with a new spin from passionate gamers and developers who want to see these old games from the past brought to the forefront again with a new flair. And now for the why. Why did I decide to get into making an emulator rather than buying a modern console that we have today? For me, I've kind of fallen out of love with modern gaming, and it's for a similar reason that I have a hesitancy around the smart world and modern tech in general. Gaming today, like almost everything else, has become far too enmeshed in our lives and tying us too much to the online world. Similarly with how smartphones have become devices that have swallowed up our days with screen time, mainstream gaming has gone from simple fun to immersive worlds that eat our time and attention. Like guys, there's a big jump from Super Mario Bros to things like Skyrim or Cyberpunk or Red Dead Redemption 2. Little games where you could just pick up and play have moved to these immersive experiences where you can lose hundreds of hours in. And like with our other technologies, in my experience, modern gaming has also become more isolating for the player as well. When I was growing up, it was the age of local multiplayer. We would all go play Super Smash Bros on N64 and then GameCube. We'd all go to a friend's house and play Guitar Hero or have a LAN party with Halo or Call of Duty. At this point, many mainstream games are large single player experiences and any of the multiplayer games are online. Now, before you get mad and comment, I know this isn't the case for every game all across the industry, but I do think this is a trend that is taking over the mainstream. Like I said, when I was growing up, multiplayer was something you did in person with multiple players. All of my friends would get together and we'd all grab a controller and we would play in the same room. Nowadays, kids are saying goodbye to their friends at the end of a school day and they're all going home and maybe seeing one another or hearing one another playing virtually in their own pods in their own bedrooms on their online systems. And honestly, folks, I think we are worse off for that. The social part of gaming has really become diminished over the years. We're much more isolated while we're playing our games and we're playing them for a lot longer. There's plenty of examples we've all seen online where people are wearing diapers so they don't have to get up from playing their game. Extreme, but it does happen. One of the things that kind of pushed me over the edge with modern gaming was I just had this kind of realization of people playing these online games like Animal Farm or What's not called Animal Farm? Animal Party with Animal Game Crossing. This idea of a person playing a game like Sims or even Animal Crossing or something like that where it's their job to maintain a house or a village or something like that. And they're washing dishes and they're mowing the lawn in the game. Meanwhile, they're living in this house that is a complete mess. They have dishes piling up in the sink. The bed's unmade. They're surrounded by Cheetos and pizza boxes. Losing hours in a game, maintaining your ideal life while you're kind of letting your life slip away in reality. So for that and the reasons I mentioned prior, over the years my interest in gaming kind of fizzled out. I sold all of my consoles and for a lot of years I had none. I had none except for this thing my Game Boy Advance SP. I got this thing when I was a kid and this is one of my favorite game systems. This thing is just about perfect. If it had a headphone jack, it would be perfect. It has a backlight, the battery will stay on standby for years and the games are this perfect mix of entertaining but not overly addicting. I still have many of the original games that I had for this thing and I love to jump into them from time to time and have a bit of fun. But I also wanted the ability to play a little bit of local multiplayer with my girlfriend or my friends and I wanted to try some newer games too. So at that point, being inspired by my Game Boy, I wanted to go back to where gaming used to be. Simple, fun, a pick up and play experience, and I wanted to build my own console that reminded me of why I loved gaming in the first place. And folks, that's where this thing came in, a Raspberry Pi computer. A little over a year ago, I bought a Raspberry Pi 
i3b in a deal on Marketplace with a bicycle, actually. I was looking for the bicycle and then saw that the guy had the computer as well and I bought it in a bundle. Originally, I didn't have much of a plan of what I wanted to do with it, so the thing sat for the last year and I haven't used it. But recently, it crossed my mind that I bet you there is a big emulation scene on Raspberry Pis and surprise, surprise, there is. There are some great emulator setups that you can get for the Raspberry Pi system. You can hook them up to your TV, you can use wireless controllers, and you can get pretty much any type of game you want. But retro mainly, and your mileage may vary depending on the speed and age of your Raspberry Pi. But as I said, because I was looking to reconnect with that retro gaming experience, this thing seemed like the perfect option for me. But even more fun are some of the cases and enclosures you can get for the Raspberry Pi system to really make it have that retro gaming feel. I picked up this one right here. This is just the box, if you can believe it or not. It's called the Game for Pi Entertainment System. This thing is designed to look exactly like an old NES and your Raspberry Pi fits inside and it even comes with a fan to cool it down. I got this on sale today on Amazon and it was 10 Canadian dollars. So with that, the cool cases that people are designing for the Raspberry Pi, all of the emulation support there is for the system, I decided to get into it. I did my first emulation on the Raspberry Pi 3B because that's the computer that I had and I had really good luck with it. It was perfect for running NES style games, SNES, Game Boy Advance, all those types of games. When I got to N64 though, those types of games were having a really hard time running on that thing and it was chugging pretty hard. So if you just want the really retro NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, that type of thing experience on your Raspberry Pi, then getting a 3B is a good way to go and those are very cheap. I got mine secondhand with a case for like 30 Canadian dollars and I've had no problems with it. But because of the fact that I'm interested in the retro emulation scene and all of the indie games that are being developed for these retro systems, I wanted to get a more powerful Raspberry Pi so I could try some of the ones that are made to be like N64 games. Luckily for me, yesterday I was able to pick up a used Raspberry Pi 4B with eight gigabytes of RAM for only 50 Canadian dollars used. This thing was very lightly used. It had some installed heat sinks on it and even a micro SD card was included. I figured that getting a Raspberry Pi of this generation was probably a good balance for me where I was able to pay a low enough price, especially by getting it secondhand and then also getting the best balance that I could of performance. Rather than just playing NES and SNES homebrews, I'm able to try things like N64 and PlayStation as well. And the best part is that this stuff was super easy to set up. Now, I may talk a lot about technology on here, but I am a digital minimalist. I like to talk about low tech and I am pretty low tech myself. And there's a couple different softwares that you can use and put on the Raspberry Pi if you wanna do this type of emulation. One is called RetroPi and I don't have any experience with that one. The one that I decided to use was one that was spoken very highly about on Reddit and it is called Botocera. Now, again, I want to say I don't know a lot about computers, so I might get some of this wrong. But to my understanding, Batocera is actually a distribution of Linux that is basically a free and open source gaming emulation platform. Essentially, it'll turn any computer, including a Raspberry Pi, into a game console. It doesn't take up very much space to use, and it can all be stored, including with your games if you want, on a micro SD card and then insert it into the Raspberry Pi, and it's ready to rock at that point. To start, you're going to need a micro SD card. Now, to be safe, you can have a faster, larger, micro SD card like a 32 or 64 gig SanDisk. Honestly, I had some slowish 8 gig and 16 gig ones that I just had kicking around the house. One said that it was for mobile only or something like that on it and they both worked fine for me. But if you want to put all your games on there as well, which does make sense, then you're going to probably want a larger SD card, especially if you're using N64 and PlayStation type homebrews, because those are going to be larger files and you're going to need more space to accommodate for that. I'll put links to as many of these things as I can in the description so you can check out and even buy these things if you want to build one of these systems yourself. Next, you got to go to Bato Sarah's site and download their system image for whatever particular Raspberry Pi that you're doing this on. Also, if you happen to be following along and you're doing this on a different type of computer, then you got to select that one. Next, I downloaded a software called Belena Etcher, which is described as a free and open source utility used for writing image files such as .iso and .img files, as well as zipped folders onto storage media to create live SD cards and USB flash drives. This is basically how you take the Botticera Linux OS get it onto the SD card so that you can get your Raspberry Pi to read it and run it. So download and install Belena Etcher. Then open it up and drag your Batocera file into the flash from files section where you're adding that onto Belena Etcher. Next, you're gonna to wanna to select the target, which is where the SD card goes. 
Once you do that, you hit flash, you wait a little bit of time and it is done. Once Belena Etcher is done its thing, that's it. Pop the SD card into your Raspberry Pi, plug in your HDMI cable, power and controller, and it should boot right up to Batocera. What's cool about Batocera is the system comes pre-installed with a few free and legal games as well. So you can test that your controller, that the audio, everything works without issue. They had some variation of that game with Donkey Kong throwing the crap down as Mario's trying to climb the ladders and get up to save Peach. Pretty good. Once you've got it booted up and confirmed that Batocera is running and working for you, you can start customizing. Now I wanna talk about adding games, AKA ROM files to this thing, so you're able to play all the cool indie games and homebrews that are out there. The way that I did this was connecting my Raspberry Pi to my internet network through Batocera itself. Then on your computer, also connected to the same network, you're gonna see Batocera come up as one of the available networks as well. Click into that and you're gonna see a folder called ROMs. Now there's a lot of things in this ROM folder and I guess that's indicative of all the things that Batocera is capable of emulating. You're gonna look for folders named as the consoles that you're looking to get homebrew or indie emulations for. Things like NES, SNES, GBA, N64, you get the picture. Now at this point, you can start gathering and adding your ROMs to Batocera. As I said, the ROMs that I'm using on this console are going to be legal ROMs that are made by indie developers and creators, sometimes free, sometimes paid for, but the through line is that they are homebrewed, good old fun ROMs. There are tons of great fun ROMs available for either free, sometimes paid, and sometimes even paid what you want. These can be found on sites like PD ROMs, which means public domain ROMs, and itch.io. I'm gonna put links to all of these and more in the description. I've got my Raspberry Pi stocked full of awesome indie games and I'm having a lot of fun playing them. These are made to look and feel like all different retro systems and they're all made by small indie developers. All you do is download the ROM file for the game that you want and then drag them to the corresponding folder based on the system that it's emulating. Then back in Batocera, go into the menu and hit update game list. At this point, everything should be ready to go. The controller usually maps automatically, but if not, you can set that up in Batocera's controller settings. I was using an Xbox One S controller that I bought a few years ago for gaming on my phone and my laptop, and by plugging it in directly into the Raspberry Pi, I had no trouble syncing it up and using it immediately on the Batocera. And folks, if you followed all those steps, that should be it. You should have yourself a working open source retro console with a whole library of indie games ready to play. What I really love about this setup is that it's customizable, it is open source, and most importantly, it is single purpose technology. When I play on this thing, it is a very different experience from playing a game on your smartphone or your computer. I'm not getting notifications, I'm not checking emails, I'm not multitasking. It is just good old fun and simple classic gaming and I love it. And honestly folks, I know that that's something that I and many of you miss about older tech. It did one thing, and it does a pretty dang good job at it too. I'm not feeling locked into an ecosystem and this thing isn't constantly trying to upsell me on DLC either. And maybe most importantly, I'm discovering and supporting small indie developers who are still making brand new NES, Game Boy, and other retro system games in 2025. And to me, those indie developers are the ones who love gaming most and I'm happy to treat it like Bandcamp and go and pay for the titles that I want. At a very small cost, I can get the best of retro indie emulation, install it on here and play it and I don't need any internet internet to boot. So I hope you found this video interesting, folks. Remember, this whole system cost me less than 60 bucks, and that is Canadian dollars, so it's closer to 45 USD. I also got the higher spec Raspberry Pi 4B so I could play some newer games, and by newer I mean N64. However, if you just want to play NES style games, SNES, things like that, you could easily get away with a Raspberry Pi 3B on this as well, and on the secondhand market, those can be had for as little as 15 bucks. Like I said, I'm really enjoying having this thing around. I'm playing 10 or 15 or 30 minutes here or there, but that's kind of the point. I'm not trying to escape for hours with this thing. I'm just trying to have some good old fun. If you want to try building one of these things yourself, like I said, I have links to all of the things that I mentioned today, the products and the software in the description. So check all of those things out below. If you've already built something like this and probably know a little bit more than I do on this, I would love to hear your suggestions down in the comments section. If this is something you're interested in building for yourself, this is something you never knew even existed, let me know in the comments section below as well. I would love to hear from from you. Thanks very much for watching folks and I'll see you in the next one.